What's up guys? Back again to do a quick review on a recent AR build that I've done. This is an AR pistol build in 6.5 Grendel. Uh, anybody that's been a follower of my channel for quite a while now probably knows that 6.5 Grendel is becoming or probably is my favorite rifle caliber. Uh, just really enjoy the ballistics on this, how it performs out in the field. Not only target shooting, but how it performs on coyotes. I do a lot of coyote hunting around here and it just performs really, really well and uh, just a good overall all around cartridge, I guess you would say. If you guys have watched some of my other videos, this is actually the little brother, I guess you would say, to my main night rig. This is an 18 inch 6.5 Grendel with my thermal scope on top and this is what I use for nighttime hunting, but I have uh, full expectations to put the thermal on this and use this AR pistol. This is a 12 and a half inch barrel. Uh, use this with the thermal on top of the AR pistol for some coyote hunting this coming fall. So make sure and stay tuned for that. But we're going to go through today, just show you how it's set up right now and kind of the build specs that I've used on this on this AR pistol here. And then first things first, before we start this video, for all you people that like to watch videos and make sure or criticize if the weapon's clear or not, weapon's always clear. See there, empty mag. Hope you guys are happy. <laughs> no shooting today, just kind of the strictly front to end what I use to build this and uh, hopefully give you guys some pointers, some ideas, and uh, we'll just go from there. So we'll just start here back at the brace. I uh, went with the SB Tactical, the SBA3. Uh, really like this brace, performs really well. Uh, to me, it pretty much matches up just like a regular buttstock would on uh, a typical, you know, full size AR 15. Uh, been real happy with that. Just a standard Magpul MOE grip here. And just a regular, um, probably going to end up putting a ambidextrous uh, safety on this, but right now just ran and running a standard mil spec safety on this. Moving up to the trigger, using another LaRue MBT trigger. I think I'm running two or three of those on various rifles. Big fan of those, especially at the price point. I think 90 bucks or something like that. I haven't looked recently, but that's what they were last time I bought them. On this one, using a oversized Strike Industries charging handle. Probably going to switch to what I use on almost all my other ARs, and that's a, just a BCM gunfighter. I think Mod 4 is what I typically use on the others. And uh, arrow precision lower on this just because it's cheap and I'm not too picky on my lowers. And people say this differently, but uh, using the Viltor um, upper receiver on this, and it does have a little bit of play, a little bit of slop in it, but I did make a video on something that I've been doing for years on how to relieve the or fix the play in between the upper and the lower receiver just by putting a standard O-ring here between the upper and the lower. So check that out on my channel if you ever have an AR that doesn't have a real good fit between the uh, upper and the lower receiver. Real simple, real cheap fix there. Uh, moving on up here to the optics using the Vortex Strike Eagle 3 to 18 by 44. Really, really like this thing. I was kind of hesitant on how big of a scope I wanted to put on this, but I think it works really well because I'm always gonna run this suppressed so it really balances well uh, once I throw my uh, Griffin Armament Recce 7 on the front, it just balances things out really, really well. I was just kind of hesitant on how big, how much real estate this optic would take, but we'll throw the suppressor on here at the end. You guys can kind of see how it balances out. And for the, the optic mount, using the American Defense mount, that's the, the quick, quick detach. Real big fan of that. Great company, made in the USA. Uh, solid product there. And then moving on to the handguard or the rail using the BCM MCMR 10 inch rail. I uh, really like this thing, super slim profile, fits really well in the hand. It allows you to get a real good purchase on it, just a real slim profile so it fits in the hand really, really well. And it's super lightweight as well. Went with the 10 inch because I'm using the 12 and a half inch Ballistic Advantage Hansen uh, 6.5 Grendel barrel with the BA uh, Ballistic Advantage gas block as well. And then up front here, my muzzle device, just like on all my other rifles and ARs, is one of the taper mounts. Uh, Griffin Armament makes several different variations of the, the brakes, the taper mounts for your suppressor to thread on between rifle to rifle, which makes it really, really easy. 
and I don't have it yet, but I will eventually, uh, whenever I'm night hunting, uh, hunting coyotes, I won't use this hog saddle right here. What I'll do is I'll get an M-lock plate so I can do a direct connection to my ball head here. Just like the stability of that a little bit better. And as, as you guys have seen on my other rig, it's this plate right here. It just allows you to set it directly on top of the ball head. That way you're not sitting in the clamps or the vise of the hog saddle. Now I'll go ahead and thread this suppressor on here and kind of give you guys an idea of what this looks like. Thread it up. I just think it balances really well. Um, you know, this is, I kind of run this in the middle position, so you could go there, you could go all the way up, but I kind of run it right there, uh, right there, right kind of in the middle. Just gives you good, good eye relief on the, on the optic. Like I say, really big fan of that, but I'll be using this in daytime, and then I plan to run the thermal on this, so hopefully get some coyote kills here this coming fall. Uh, once again, as you guys know, Indiana does have a coyote season, so I don't hunt too much out of season. Do a little bit here and there, but uh, I really pour, pour it on in the in the winter months and like to get out there and chase some coyotes around. Uh, when I'm not shooting off the tripod, I will be running my uh, Vickers combat sling. Uh, big fan of those. Have several of these on different rifles, and I have a quick detach here on the SB Tactical SBA3 uh, brace, so you can just do quick detach, pop it in that back flush cup, and then I'll show you here a close up, but I've got a rail attachment for another uh, attachment point there. And that's, that's what I do whenever I'm not running on the tripod, but most of the time, whenever I'm night hunting, 95% uh, of the time I will not uh, put a sling on it just because it's one more thing to rattle against uh, the tripod here, you know, make any extra noise. Don't want to scare them dogs off when you're trying to call them in. Oh, and before I forget, uh, Bolt Carrier Group and Bolt is made by Faxon. I did put an attachment point up here for a bipod attachment. That way I can throw a, a bipod on it for shooting long range and uh, shoot prone that way. But I just kind of want to show you guys the difference between these two. Uh, show you the pistol version and then show you the full size version. And if you guys haven't seen the review on this one, I'll make sure and throw it up at the very end. You guys can click on it there and take a look at that video. Anyway, that's pretty much it for today. Just wanted to bring this to you guys, kind of give you guys a rundown of what I use for, on this build. If you guys have any questions on anything on this build, on coyote hunting, uh, ARs in general, rifles, whatever it might be, make sure and comment down below. Appreciate all you guys following along. Can't wait till coyote season gets here. I'll make sure and do some shooting videos with this as well so you guys can see how this performs. And until next time, happy hunting. Be safe. See ya. Bye.